each of you, it's a two-part question. Can you let the audience know something that your organization does that they might want to look at to help them start a business or continue to grow their business? And two, what is your personal best advice for women in the audience who want to become entrepreneurs or who are now? Um, I'll start with my best advice. Say you're in business, and then you are, and really believe that you can do it. That's, the, I think, the biggest distinguishing factor of the women who end up doing it, and frequently between women and men. Um, and um, uh, our organization works only with women who are low income. Uh, so if you're a single woman and you're making $39,000 or less, you may get a client prospect for us. But if not, I want to invite you to come and um, help these women uh, find networks and find success and go shopping. <laughs> Sweet. So I like the Rubius Hatch Network. The way that we have evolved our business is we're taking these amazing women that we've attracted who are seasoned business professionals. They've come over that you know four-year hurdle of, oh, you know, or is your business going to fail? And we connect those women with the women who are questioning, the women who are in the startup stage or the pre-startup stage, women who've been around for a little while but need an extra boost. So we connect the questioners with the mentors, and Kathy is one of our mentors that we're in Oakland. Um, my advice is that entrepreneurship is a state of mind. It's not just what your bank account or business card says, although I do say, you know, fake it till you make it, just say you are one, but it's, it's in your head. And the best thing you can do is do whatever it takes to feed your baby, that's your business. If that means you've got a side job, if that means you're doing a contract, if that means you're still holding your day job while you're doing this on the side, do it. You know, it, it doesn't have to be full time to get it going. So keep, keep your head in the game and don't let someone tell you you're not really one because you're still making your dog treats or your biscuits at home and you don't have a commercial kitchen yet. You're doing it. Keep that in mind. Okay, so first I get to answer twice because I represent two organizations here. Um, and I, I, I am speaking, I mean, everything I've been saying is only about women in kind of the high-tech fields and aspiring to be high-growth companies. Um, with NCWIT, the National Center for Women in IT, what we do is we, um, we showcase women. We have a podcast of interviews with very successful women entrepreneurs, uh, and I recommend to anyone to uh, listen to those. It's ncwit.org slash heroes, and you can embed them and share them and so on. Um, and with Women 2.0, we actually just launched our what we call pre-incubator. So we are trying to, there's a lot of incubators out here. I'm sure you all have heard of White Combinator and Astia and Hatch and so on. And what we're trying to do is increase the funnel into um, those incubators. So we've seen that a lot of women come and they have an idea, but they don't have the right co-founders or don't have the technical skills. What we do is we put them together into teams, um, give them a space to work on their idea, figure out how it feels to be in the startup world. We bombard them with advisors and network, net network with them with the right people. Um, it's called Women 2.0 Labs, and um, if anyone, and it's done by the way while you keep your day job. So anyone who wants to uh, feel what it, what it feels like to, to start a startup while keeping their job before they make the plunge, um, check that out. And my advice would be to actually just immerse yourself with entrepreneurs, um, everything from role models to just go to these networking events that Allison mentioned, and if, I mean feel the 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 ambiance that is happening in Silicon Valley. I came here, never thought I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I actually don't think I still want to be, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I meet them every day, and every day I'm like, maybe I should start my company. I mean, it just makes you want to go do it when you're immersed with, with that crowd, so that's my kind of advice. I agree. I think entrepreneurship is very contagious mm -hmm. when you're in Silicon Valley. Um, I relocated two and a half years ago, and that's when I started my business. <laughs> um, I would say my piece of advice, um, is to anyone starting out is, is to find up front what success looks like to you. And that could mean, you know, your lifestyle choice, that could mean X amount in your in your bank account or being, you know, a Fortune 500 company, whatever it is. Um, I think that helps, you know, having to find that and kind of uh, understanding how to get from where you are and sort of planning a roadmap, at least a general direction of sorts, would, is really helpful. And, um, and, and then, making sure that it's, it's something you're really passionate about because 
when it's all the late nights and the scary bills and, and trying to find new clients, um, that's that's the one thing that's going to keep you going and you know make sure that you you stay tenacious and, and just not give up. Um, as far as resources, Save the Success um, caters to sort of emerging um, and um, <laughs> mid-sized uh, entrepreneurs and businesses, and we have something specifically catered to. Uh, women businesses that are looking to reach the seven-figure revenue. It's called a seven-figure club, and uh, what it is, it's basically training and coaching from very high-level coaches that group small parts of women um, are sort of picked to apply for it, and then you you um, have monthly sort of training and leadership on specific uh, topics that will help your business get to the next level. So if that's something that interests you, um, definitely you know drop me a line or go to savethesuccess.com where there's more information uh, for businesses that are just looking to support and brainstorm. We have monthly mastermind meetings uh, that happen down in um, South Park in San Francisco. So both that um, all of that information can be found online at savethesuccess.com. Thank you, Aisha. And um, this is Kathy Curtis, Curtis Financial Planning. My best advice as a financial planner yeah. is don't quit your day job <laughs> and don't rack up credit card charges. Make sure you have a financial plan before you start spending your own money. So that is it what? for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank our panelists, our excellent audience here at the club, and our listening audience. And this Commonwealth Club program is now adjourned. Woo.